The bridge was only a few hundred yards away, but it seemed farther. March obviously was not springtime in St. Petersburg. The dark, the wind, and the snow made it feel more like January in Alaska. Personally, I would have preferred a sweltering day in the Egyptian desert. Even with warm clothes that Beth had summoned for us, my teeth couldn't stop chattering. Bess was not in a hurry. He kept slowing down and giving us the guided tour that I thought my nose would fall off from the frostbite. He told us we were on Velizkizi Island, across the Neva River from the center of St. Petersburg. He pointed out the different church spires and monuments, and when he got excited, he started slipping in the Russian. You've spent a lot of time here, I said. We walked in silence for a few pa paces. Most of that was long ago. It wasn't. He stopped so abruptly I stumbled into him. He stared across the street at a big palace with canary yellow walls and a green gabled roof lit up in the night. Through a swirl of snow, it looked unreal, like one of the ghostly images in the first gnome's hall of ages. Prince Meshnikov's palace, Bess muttered. His voice was full of loathing. I almost thought he was going to yell boo at the building, but he just gritted his teeth. Sadie looked at me for an explanation, but I wasn't a walking Wikipedia like she seemed to think. I knew stuff about Egypt, but Russia? Eh, not so much. You mean Menshnikov as in Vlad the Inhaler? I asked. He's a descendant. Bess curled his lips with distaste. He said a Russian word I was willing to bet was a pretty bad insult. Back in the 1700s, Prince Meshnikov threw a party for Peter the Great, the Tsar who built the city. Peter loved dwarves. He was a lot like the Egyptians that way. He thought we were a good luck, so he always kept some of us in his court. Anyways, Meshnikov wanted to entertain the Tsar, so he thought it would be funny to stage a dwarf wedding. He forced them. He forced us to dress up, pretended to get married and dance around. All the big folk were laughing and jeering. His voice trailed off. Best described the party like it was yesterday. Then I remembered this weird little guy was a god. He'd been around for eons. Sadie put her hand on his shoulder. I'm sorry, Bess. Must have been awful. He scowled. Russian magicians, they love capturing gods and using us. I can still hear that wedding music and the czar laughing. How'd you get away? I asked. Bess glared at me. Obviously, I'd asked a bad question. Enough of this. Bess turned up his collar. We're wasting time. He forged ahead, but I got the feeling he wasn't really leaving Menshnikov's palace behind. Suddenly, its cheery yellow walls and brightly lit windows looked sinister. Another hundred yards through the bitter wind, and we reached the bridge. On the other side, the winter palace shimmered. I'll take the Mercedes the long way around. Bess said, down to the next bridge and circle south of the Hermitage. Less likely to alert the magicians that I'm here. Now I realized why he was so paranoid about setting off alarms. Magicians had snared him in St. Petersburg once before. I remembered what he told us in the car. Don't get captured alive. How do we find you if we succeed? Sadie asked. When you succeed, Bess said. Think positive, girl, or the world ends. Right. Sadie shivered in her new parka. Positive. I'll meet you in the Nevsky Profkit, the main street with all the shops just south of the Hermitage. I'll be at the Chocolate Museum. The what now? I asked. Well, it's not really a museum. More of a shop. Closed this time of night, but the owner always opens it for me. They've got chocolate everything. Chess sets, lions, Vladimir Lenin heads. The communist guy? I asked. Yes, Professor Brilliance, Beth said. The communist guy, in chocolate. So let me get this straight, Sadie said. We break into a heavily guarded Russian National Museum, find the magician's secret headquarters, find a dangerous scroll, and escape. Meanwhile, you'll be in chocolate. Beth nodded solemnly. It's a good plan. It might work. If something happens and I can't meet you at the chocolate museum, our exit point is the Egyptian bridge to the south of the Fontanica River. Just turn on the... Enough, Sadie said. You will meet us at the chocolate shop, and you will provide me with a takeaway bag. That's final. Now go! 
Bess gave her a lopsided smile. You're okay, girl. He trudged back towards the Mercedes. I looked across the half-frozen river to the Winter Palace. Somehow London didn't seem as dreary or dangerous anymore. Uh, are we in as much trouble as I think? I asked Sadie. More, she said. Let's go crash the Tsar's palace, shall we? End of chapter 9